Praise the Lord and welcome to the good news of a life without fear. I'm Bob Fowler and what a privilege and honor it is for me to be able to spend this time with you today. Well, it is Monday, May 15th, May 10th, I'm sorry, getting ahead of myself. Uh, can you believe it is already May? Can you believe how fast this year has flown by? I can hear some say, well, it's kind of gone a little slow to me. Well, whether you feel like it's slow or if it's gone fast, we're almost halfway through 2021 already. And I pray that as you look back, and typically I'll say on a Monday, I pray, or on Friday, as you look back, I pray that you've seen God's favor, God's blessing, God's uh, prosperity on and in your life. But I pray that as you look back at this year, you know, so often when we're right in front of something, we cannot always necessarily see what God is doing. But as we look back in retrospect, as you left 2020 coming into 2021, some of you, God led you into tremendous changes, personal, family, so on and so forth. We could continue on down that road. But as you look back, you can see God's faith, God's favor, God's blessing, God's prosperity, and God has allowed you to be where you are right now. So I just pray that today you look back and you have such a heart of gratitude and thanksgiving. And maybe as you look at your life, you say, well, you know what? There's not a lot of things right now that I can look at and be thankful for. Uh, if you know him, you can be thankful. If you know him, you can be grateful. If you know him, you can be appreciative. If you know him, you can let out a hallelujah or thank you, Lord, that no matter what happens in my life, I thank you that I have a relationship with you that nothing or no one can separate me from. That's what Romans chapter 8 says. There's nothing that's able to separate you or I from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Well, before we get into the message today, I want to encourage you, if you didn't get a chance to watch Friday's program, or even if you did, I want to encourage you to go back and watch it or watch it again. And if you haven't already, share it with your friends on your social media platform. You know what we don't realize so often is we're just a couple of clicks away from a blessing not only for our lives, but a click or two away from being a blessing to other people. And Friday night, Adis and Daniel joined me and we had an awesome, awesome time. We talked about new thing. God wants to do a new thing in your life. He wants to do away with the former, whether it's good or bad. He wants to give you a brand new victory, a brand new experience, brand new refreshing. You know, in Acts chapter 3, we read the words that there are times of refreshing that come upon the people of God. And I know that in some of our lives, matter of fact, I think I could say in all of our lives, we find ourselves where we need to be refreshed. We need to be encouraged. We need to be strengthened. We need God to once again whisper into our spirit what he thinks of us, remind us of the promises of his word. And so if you're there, don't necessarily look at it as a lack of faith. Just look at it as a situation where, you know, our outward man perishes, but our inward man is renewed day by day. And every person in the Bible needed to be encouraged, including Jesus. You say, well, wait a minute. I think Jesus probably walked around and he was, he was the source of encouragement. No, we see in the garden to where if it had not been for God making provision with angels to strengthen him, he would have never gone on to the cross. He asked, as a matter of fact, Father, if there's any other way, let this cup, this assignment pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. So if you're there, don't feel unspiritual. Don't feel unworthy. You're in good company. The son of the living God found himself in that same position. The Bible says that we have a high priest who has passed into the heavenlies, who is touched with the feeling of our faith, of our strengths. No, he is touched 
with the feelings of our infirmities, our weaknesses. And what God told Saul, or Paul rather, he said, Paul, in your weakness, my strength is made perfect. So I want to encourage you, if you're feeling weak today, if you're feeling a little beaten down today, don't shy away from going to the Lord and saying, you know, Lord, I need you to wrap your arms around me. I need you to encourage me, strengthen me, bless me, refresh me. Whatever it is you need, that is what he will be. He is Emmanuel. He is God with us. Well, let's get into this. It's going to take me half the program to read the title. And I know it's a little lengthy. Uh, I could have probably chopped it down a few words, but... I think that if I would have done that, it would have lost some of its meaning. Whatever you feed will thrive, and whatever you starve will die. Let me say that again. Whatever you feed will thrive, and whatever you starve will die. Now, I want you to think about that. Whatever I feed, that's what's going to thrive. It's going to grow. It's going to mature. It's going to develop. It's going to move forward. But whatever I starve, it's going to wither, it's going to diminish, and eventually it's going to die. It's going to go away. And so I want you with those words to that title to open your heart up to see what God wants you to feed in your life. And in feeding something, you automatically will be starving something. I want to go back to a verse that I read Friday night, and it's Philippians chapter 3, verse 13. The Apostle Paul speaking, he said, Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are are ahead. He goes on in verse 14 to say that I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Paul was there. That's where we're at as well. While we've received salvation, we're pressing. We're leaning. We're leaning through adversity. We're pressing through adversity. We're, we're pressing through whatever it is that would try to oppose us mentally, physically, financially, whatever aspect you're pressing through. And how do we do that? We do so by faith. But one thing he says here, and we alluded to it Friday night, talking about forgetting. And I wanted to look this word up and go a little bit farther into what this word in this verse means. To forget literally means to forget by, watch this, neglecting. No longer caring for something. Forgotten, given over to oblivion, uncared for, unnourished. That is the definition of forget or forgetting. To not give attention to, to not tend to, to not care for. When we think about this, I, I, I always, and, and I have not done a lot of gardening, but I always think about gardening. If you took two plants and you planted them in a backyard, same soil, same depth, but the only thing and the only difference was the amount of nutrients or water that you provided for each plant. One, you watered every day, and the other one, you watered once a week, or maybe you even forget to water that one plant. What's going to happen? Well, because of the lack of nutrients, the lack of water, the lack of attention, it's going to begin to wither and it's eventually not going to produce what it was intended to produce and it will die. Well, what happens in our life and how do we water things in our life? How do we water spiritual seeds in our life? Well, we've talked a lot about this. We take a word from God's word, a promise. We put it within the soil of our heart. That's the whole story of the parable of the seed and the sower. We take the word, we implant it in the soil of our heart, and it's in our mind. We meditate on it. We muse over it. We think about it but also we speak it. So how do you water the word in your life? Whatever you, 
let, let, let's back up for a moment. It's not just the word that we water with the words of our mouth. It's everything that we water with the words of our mouth. In other words, if you talk about your problem all the time, whether you realize it or not, you're feeding and giving strength to your problem. Oh, this is what this person's done to me. This is what that person has done to me. So on and so forth. If you, if that's the area that you're dealing with, what you, re, what you don't realize is you are perpetuating and giving roots to the seed of that problem. But what happens when you neglect it? What happens when you abandon it? What happens when you stop talking about it and you start talking about the goodness of God, the blessing of the Lord, the favor of the Lord, the scriptures that God has shown you in his word. Those things that you begin to talk about will grow and thrive, but what you stop talking about will begin to wither away and eventually will die. And I use that word eventually because while we would love to experience the miraculous, and what is the miraculous? Well, something instantaneous, immediately, no process, no waiting, no, no walking it out through faith and patience. It's just an instantaneous miracle. We believe it, and not only do we receive it in our spirit, but we receive it in our lives. And the truth is, is that the majority of things don't happen that way. The majority of things in God we grow into. Now we've received them in their fullness in our spirit, but until we learn to actually uh, tap into that resource that lives within our spirit, that peace, that joy, that healing, that forgiveness, that abundant life, until we access it, through our soul, which is our mind, our will, and our emotions, and it includes the process of you and I applying our words, we will not see those things grow in our lives. So the way that we water things is through words. And it shouldn't really be a surprise to us when you look and see how God created the whole world. He created them not by his hands, but through his words. He thought it, then he spoke it. He thought it, then he spoke it. Could it be, hmm, that God still continues to create in and through our lives in that same way, through believing and speaking? In Romans chapter 10, we read the words concerning salvation, but it's also concerning what we're talking about. We believe in our heart, confess with our mouth, and then what happens? We're saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, but with the mouth confession is made. So while there's a reality of something within your spirit, will you ever really enjoy it and experience it until you speak it out of your mouth? You see, no matter what is in your spirit, if God dwells in your spirit in the fullness inside of Christ, but yet you never declare it, you never speak it, will you ever truly experience it in this life? And I believe the answer is no. I remember years ago, somebody, this is a long time ago, in a, in a Sunday school class that I was teaching, uh, they made a statement that they believed that there were people that were born again, just didn't realize that they were born again. And I, I immediately took issue with that because the Bible says that his spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. There are no accidental Christians. It is all intentional. And there are no believers that will walk in the favor and the blessing of the Lord unless it is intentional. It's not accidental and it's not automatic. It is you and I realizing, number one, what Christ has done in us, who dwells in our spirit, and then accessing that by faith and through the words of our mouth. They overcome by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they love not their life even unto death. In other words, they love God more than they love themselves. They love God's plan, God's will, 
God's future for their life more than they love even their own plans. But they overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. You see, you cannot remove confession from the life of a believer. Because if you do, you will starve no matter what is within them. You will choke it out and starve it from ever becoming a reality in that person's life. And my friend, if maybe you've got a bad feeling toward the importance of confession, you need to think back because you, you, you couldn't even get saved unless you confessed Christ. Jesus said, confess me before men, I'll confess you before my father. Deny me before men, I'll deny you before my father. We cannot divorce ourselves or alienate ourselves or separate ourselves from the importance of what we allow to come out of our mouth. And it's confessing who we already are that brings who we already are to the forefront of our life. See, whatever you feed will thrive. And how do we feed things? Through the words of our mouth. And whatever you starve, it will die. And how do we starve things? You cease talking about them. Now, let me get on something real quick. People have hurt you, done wrong to you. Join the crowd. And I'm not trying to not be sympathetic, but the truth of it is we all have a story. When it relates and as it relates to those events in your life, and it doesn't have to be a person, it could be an event, a moment, something. How do you look back at those moments? Are you continually perpetuating the bad that has happened to you or the negative that has happened to you? Or have you moved on? Have you embraced, and I, and I love what we talked about Friday night, having a new thing, but until you, you, you and I can only experience a new thing until we've let go of the old thing. Think about that. We can only embrace the newness of what God has for our lives today until we let go of what has happened yesterday, whether it's good or bad. You see, the wonderful thing is God wants to do new things in your life today. Now, it may not be what you want. Most of us, when we're in pain, we just want to get out of pain. But is there a beauty in the pain? Is there a beauty in the process? Is there a beauty in the waiting? Is there a beauty in the patience? Well, sure there is. But we're going to have to open up our eyes to say, God, and open up our hearts to say, God, show me what you want me to see in this season of my life. And that's where the Holy Spirit will come into your life and reveal something to you that was there all along. It's just that you were not able to see it. Whatever you feed will thrive. And whatever you starve will die. What are you feeding in your life today? And what have you intentionally decided to starve out of your life? You see, I can't help it. Every time I open my mouth, I start talking about these negative things. Oh, you can help it. You determine what comes out of your mouth. Not God, not the devil, you do. Think about that. God never will grab a hold of your tongue and make you say a certain thing or not say a certain thing. He has given that right and that privilege to you to make that decision. And the interesting thing is, whether we'd like to think we can or not, you can't think about two things at the same time. So if you don't like what you're thinking about, immediately shift, change your thoughts. Look at the sky, look at the clouds, look at the birds, look at the grass. Think on anything, and yes, think on the Word of God, but think on anything other than what you know is there to distract you and ultimately to defeat you. You see, there are two things that want to grow in your life, and I'm going to close with this. God wants to grow, develop, mature, and fully form in your life. But that old nature wants to as well, that flesh. Paul came to realize that there in his flesh there dwelt no good thing. There was no profit, nothing productive, nothing that would produce the God character and God nature within his life. So he opted to crucify, put to death that area of his life and to talk about what God had done in his life. What are you talking about? 
because whatever you're talking about is what you're feeding in your life. Well, we may talk a little bit more about this tomorrow, but I pray that this day has been, this this message has been a source of encouragement. And if you haven't had an opportunity, go back and watch Friday's program. It will certainly be a blessing to you. Well, if this program or any other program has been a blessing to you, I want to ask you to do something. Would you go back and in the description section for this program, there are several different ways, very easy ways, quick ways for you to be a blessing to the ministry of Faith is a Victory Fellowship. All you need to do is to be able to know how to text, send an email, or download an app. And chances are 99 and 9 tenths percent of the people watching have done that at least once. Very simple, private, secure way for you to give back and invest into the ministry of Faith is the Victory Fellowship. Hey, whether your gift is large or small, thank you. And I just declare God's blessing, God's favor, and God's prosperity over your life. Well, I pray that you've made your mind up. This is going to be an awesome week, a blessed day, and God is going to show you something this week that you hadn't seen up to this point of your life. Hey, I love you. God loves you. And as always, my friend, never, ever forget, he is faithful.